governor. <coughs> Hello everyone, it's me, Miss Cracker, and it is time for another episode of High Tea, where we talk about everything that has to do with everything that has to do with Drag Race UK Season 1. I have brought with me today two very wonderful and funny gentlemen. I have Johnny and Colin from All Right, Mary. <laughs> it's a podcast. It's available on all of the podcast platforms. So check it out. <laughs> so wait, how long have you been doing this podcast? Uh, a little over three years now. Yeah. And what inspired you to do it? I think we both were kind of in a creative slump, and we both also really like to talk about Drag Race. Right. So we kind of put two and two together and said, let's do a podcast. Yes. Yeah. And we kind of created it thinking, well, someone will listen, five people will listen, maybe my mom will listen. Right. And now here we are. That's literally what started this show. So <laughs> here we are in the same spirit. So let's spill some tea. First of all, it's good Bye to Scaredy Cat. But the real issue that starts off this episode is the girls going right back to talking about how Cheryl might be a little fake. They're all sort of on. This is the, the premier season of Drag Race UK, but they also know they need to come in with a brand and they need to come in with catchphrases and ways for people to remember them and buy their t-shirts. Yeah. And so I, I almost feel like the situation lends itself to maybe feeling fake because you're trying to be somebody. I feel for her, but I do love the taste of blood in the water. Oh, I think that's that's completely <laughs> it, right? Yeah. Like yeah. when they see someone that they could just like, oh, oh, you're fake, you're right. fake. Mm -hmm. Right, what if I can make her the fake one? Right, right, yeah. right. exactly. Right. So that people don't know that you could see my wig line. Right, yeah. exactly, <laughs> like, look who's fake. <laughs> yeah. She's a faker, yeah, like, listen. Not a real woman. <laughs> <laughs> the mini challenge this week was the Maypole challenge. <laughs> now, we are going back to Stonehenge we are celebrating United Kingdom heritage, which is what's funny to me is that white people are the indigenous people of the UK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> the challenge here, Rue has all the girls do a traditional maypole dance, and they have to go from classy to hoedown. I think this was 2 a.m. at the pub. I think this was last call, and they yeah. were just pulling out all the stops to bring someone home. That's right. what I saw. I was surprised at Crystal because she has sort of faded into the background uh, many a time at every opportunity. Mm -hmm. And here she was kicking her legs around the pole and giving them nutsack, which is, <laughs> you know, you go balls out. Yeah, there's right. side boob and then there's side ball. Right? Yeah. yeah, hashtag nutcracker. Yeah. One of your favorites was Blue Hydrangea. Oh, yes. God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was giving me like, you know, Les Mis Eponine and getting her hair cut, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, she was the one that looked like the fryer, right? Yeah. Fryer untucked. Yeah. yeah. yeah so put some more wood on yeah, the fryer. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Put some more wood on the fryer. <laughs> what I really love, however, was Cheryl's performance. Not because she gave the winning death drops, which anyone with two knees can do, but because I saw that rage in her yeah. eyes, and I remember doing mini challenges. When you're doing a mini challenge, you're like, I will win something this day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think the running theme from this performance and in general for Cheryl this episode has just been like, even if you're not sure, or you know, if you don't think it's great, just sell it. Oh. Just sell it until right. someone buys it. Let's get right to Boop. the main challenge. Uh, the main challenge for this week is the sewing challenge. It is posh on a penny, drag on a dime. <laughs> um, and all the girls have to make fabulous drag out of trash. Rue gives the first real walk around with the girls, mm. and she gives some of her first advice. Some Teen Wong does not want to hear it. I feel like if, if RuPaul's name is on the show and RuPaul yeah. is saying, I want you to change up your look, no problem, you got it. Right. And if I'll, I'll go back to my old look when I go home. You yeah. Know? I, I mean, a perfect example of someone that did not listen to Rue, Benda La Creme for Snatch Game. Oh right. Because yeah. uh, she, uh, RuPaul was not sold on Maggie Smith. Yeah. And then, of course, she won. She killed it. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like it depends on. You have to kind of read Rue. Yeah. If Rue is like going, on, like I don't know. Are you sure? Right. Well, make it funny. Yeah. Make me laugh. And yeah. you're like, oh, 
one maybe I should change, but sometimes yeah. that pride is also something that will make you shine because that's a story. Let's have a look at some of the runways and talk about what we loved and what we didn't love. I wanna start with Davina, whose look was simply Davine. Uh, what did you guys think of this, like, Tilda Swinton Yeah, I was getting David like, Bowie. I was getting yeah. like, like, Florence Welch. Like, oh, absolutely. Like, dog days are over, girl. <laughs> the uh, dog days are over! Yeah, get that Ikea bag, you know? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's fabulous. Get that Ikea bag, girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Build it yourself by just looking at pictures, and she did it. She did it. I was like, Valencia! Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. living. Killing it today, all the way through, we have crystal. Mm, you yeah. can't really tell exactly what it's all made of, but you know that she embraced the challenge. You can see that these materials are from the boot. Uh, let's talk about her. What did you think? Well, I just love the idea that this is this regal look that in some ways you, you don't know that it's coming from a car boot. Yeah. And then when you find out that these big exaggerated hips are made from like beach balls, like that's just, I think that's just so cool that something so elegant is made of something so mundane. I did go to like this Cinderella stepsisters going to the ball because of the beach balls. It it seemed like more costumey because it was period. Yeah. But I thought it was impeccably made. The part of the look that sold me was the, the contoured hairy chest. I just, I just think that is so keeping on brand with what Crystal wants to do. Drag should confuse you and make yeah. you think a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Now there was a lot of things that were going right on this runway. Oh yeah. But there was some Ting Wong. Oh, honey. <laughs> oh, Let's talk honey. about uh, some Ting Wong. So outfit. something, something yeah. Wong. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Honestly, if I'm being real, when it came out, my first impression was like, oh my God, she pulled it together and yeah. I was so proud. But then there were also issues. What do you guys think? I mean, I think that if she is the CEO of some company, they have an HR nightmare on their hands with, with, the, with the reveal. Yeah. Um, I also, um, <laughs> I felt like the way that she was walking down the runway, I thought if she takes her hands off those hips, this whole thing is just gonna go flying. Right. I don't think she sold it. Like if she was gonna do that look, like you know, walk down the runway, oh. you know, and then boom, but it was like, I gotta hold it together, yeah. you know? Having done the runway myself, almost every single one of my outfits has been held up by an arms akimbo. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah. I, I'm like, You're oh, the elbow. Yeah, yeah, it's my signature style, but it's really just like, ooh, ah, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, I, I felt that when I was watching her, so I was like, wanted to forgive. But you're right, it is about selling it, and she uh, could have and gotten away with it better. It's time for the girls to go backstage and talk a little bit um, about their feels. Um, mm -hmm. This was a, a tough one. Now, this is the moment for me that I realized something, that Baga is emerging as the narrator of the season. Yeah, completely. Absolutely. We talk about this on All Right Mary, we consider this like a pizza queen, where like, I don't really care what she comes out looking like, I just am happy to see her, because like pizza, even when it's not good, it's still good, it's still pizza, <laughs> and I love pizza. That's like, if you right? get nothing, from this episode, but that, then yeah. That's I hope so, it. yeah. A pizza queen. A pizza, pizza queen. queen, pizza queen. The drama I saw was with Vivian, kind of just literally like reading the room. And you yeah. even saw throughout the episode that these girls are kind of looking to her approval. Right. And so even in uh, when they were backstage, she was one of the highest kind of physically. Yeah. Right. But then yeah. also just kind of being like, well, I think this about your look and I think this about your look. And I'm not saying that her opinions aren't valid. Yeah. But it's just very interesting to see that power dynamic come out backstage. Right. And then the girls just like shivering in their boots when Vivian, you know, points right at them. I think that that's sort of a, it's a double-edged sword though because then the expectations are higher. Right. And so if, if she has a look that is sort of safe because she's been doing so well, it actually looks like a low. Another thing that came up was, hello, it's season 19. Why can't you sew? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think at this point, for a queen to come on and say, well, I don't normally sew, it's like, that's fine. And I think even Vivian was saying that, but if you're gonna come on this show, if you're gonna do this competition, you know that this is gonna be part of it. And yeah. so, you know, start taking a class now. So, a needle pulling thread. <laughs> it's time to pick a winner. This week the award goes to Davina, who I think really richly deserved it. But then of course we have to have two soggy bottoms <laughs> and they are Vinegar Strokes and Sumting Wong. Do you think that these girls deserve to be in the bottom? I think it's fair. I think Vinegar has been kind of struggling with the looks week after week. I think something took a risk and it didn't pay off. My cousin Vinegar is what I call her. Uh, my cousin Vinegar, she uh, has the performance, just like killing it. It's just she doesn't 
um, she can't get the pressure off to make the look uh, right. work yeah. for her. Uh, I mean, the pages were full. She was littering the runway, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so for me, during the lip sync, I was like, okay, well, this is kind of a going home look, it looks like, because she's just withering away. Vinegar has been such a mother, mm, and yeah. like such a great, warm presence, <sighs> and so like honest and straightforward. I just love her so much. There was girls with sewing skills and everything, and full visions, and she just, you know, somebody has to go home third. Right. Yeah. Now, before we go any further, we have to do our favorite segment, which is The Queen's English, where we discuss all things slang in the show. The one that we should all know uh, is boot, which is obviously a shoe. Right, right, right. Uh, or a bad luck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a bad luck. Yeah. yeah, but the boot, it took me a, a minute, is the, the trunk of your car. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not the thing that goes on the, the you know, the wheel of your car. No, that when would you have be, a ticket. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was an old woman who lived in a boot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Enough about my mother-in-law. Um everybody you get the boot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want to know from you guys. Who do you think has a possibility of taking home the crown jewels? I mean, I think what we're seeing right now is Vivian is the queen to beat, but I love being wrong. I think the one that I'm pulling for, that I there's something about her performance and what she's doing is Davina De Campo. Yeah. She's divine. Yeah, yeah. she really is. <laughs> Every time you see her, you know. You're like, it's her. I, I What is she gonna say? Mm -hmm. You wanna know more. Yeah. So I am excited to find out what happens next and listen. You should be too. First of all, thank you guys so much for being here and doing this with me. Thank you, Mary. Uh, where can people find All Right, Mary? Oh, we are everywhere you could listen to a podcast. You Google us, you'll find us, yeah. Make sure to tune in Fridays at 8, 7 central on Logo to see RuPaul's Drag Race UK. I've been talking to these boys about it today, but I want to hear from you. Tweet towards us at at Logo TV, and remember to use the hashtag Drag Race UK. But every week, right after the show, you can join me for high tea, where we spill everything that has to do with Drag Race UK. I'll see you then. Goodbye! Hey, squirrel friend. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you. <laughs>